How was he born? What is he made out of? What does he think that he went through, the stages he went through in his life before he came to existence? And who can deny that? The dirty drop, being in the womb of a mother, where the person is being nourished by that blood. This is where, this is where the person was surrounded by all the najasa, all the dirt in there. And at the end, this person has no way of going anywhere after he dies but to be buried under the ground. And then, all kind of insects eating up his body, the eyes falling apart, there are insects inside the mouth that are eating up his tongue, everything is rotten. If that very same body was kept into a neighborhood, the whole neighborhood will run out of that place after a few days, after some days or after a week, because of the smell, because of the smell of it, of the body. So now, after having all of these things in the dunya, but realizing at these realities of the life, can a person think that I'm really greater than everyone else? What makes him great? Right away he should think of the angels who did not go through any of these things. They did not go through any of these najasa, any of these dirt. And throughout our lifetime, every day we have to deal with najasa, with dirt. This is the very same person that is considered to be very great. So what is greatness then? If we look at the reality, even if a person would achieve the highest in one field, in other fields, he is not there. There are people better than him. A person who is very knowledgeable, he is not physically very strong. A person who is very strong, he may not be the most knowledgeable. A person who may even have both of these, he is not very wealthy. A person who has the wealth, he doesn't have honor in the community. I mean, look at somewhere in our life where we are missing something. A doctor is not a lawyer. Lawyer is not a plumber. Plumber is not an architect. And you keep on going on. So every person is something, but he is not many other things. There he's missing a lot of other things in his life. So when I, depending on some knowledge that I have, I would say, I'm the greatest person. What does that mean? Is this is a true statement that I'm the greatest person? I mean, can that be a true statement for any human being where right away a person would tell me that, you know, what, what do you say about this medicine? Well, I don't know about it. So that person will say, I'm greater than you in knowing about medicine. All of a sudden a person comes, and he asked me, you know, uh, the roof is leaking, how to fix it? No idea. So, what is greatness for a human being? If it is knowledge, it will be knowledge of only one field. If it is strength, it will be only in certain level of our life and certain positions in our life. So, every person has something and missing a lot of other things in his life. What is that covered for us? Why? What is greatness for us then? And then if a person tries to be mutakabbir, which means tries to claim greatness, it's totally wrong for, for this person to do it, because the real greatness belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. There is no one else. Where everything is there, there is nothing that is missing. And we are missing millions of things if we have one thing. And even in the field that many times, this is the reality also, that the field that where we feel we are great, we may feel, we may find many other people who are much better than us in the very same field. But all we want to do is just prove ourselves. That's all. Every greatness 
in this world belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, when we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-mutakabbir, when we say Allah is mutakabbir, simply means Allah claims, yes, never hesitate to say this, that Allah really claims the greatness because He is great. And it suits him to claim the greatness. If he is great, he should claim it. And for us, since it does not suit us, it does not fit on us, we are not in that position. Therefore, the only thing that suits us is humbleness. These are totally two opposite things. A person trying to be proving himself great, on the other hand, a person is trying to be humble. And now, what does humbleness mean in, when we are talking in this context as the opposite of greatness? Which means, try to prove yourself nothing. Is not just show others that you are nothing. And in your heart you feel, I'm everything. In our heart, that should be the understanding, that should be the feeling, I'm nothing really. And in reality, if you look at ourselves, what are we? Really is nothing. And a human being, even if he would become anything, he is still nothing. A person who starts getting so high, all of a sudden, you go and do something in front of this person that he does not like. A per this person will start getting angry. Do it more. After some time, he's so angry that he is out of his own control. He has no control over himself. He says things that later on when he is going to think about it and he will be told that this is what you said, he will be ashamed of himself. The very same person who was trying to prove that I am so great, he has no control even over himself. And when we look at our own souls, most of the time we are trying to prove our greatness because of certain things that we have. I have a nice car, so I feel that I'm great because I have this car. When I'm sitting in this car, and you think about the position really if a person goes through that situation, when you sit in that car and you're driving it, you, others are looking at you, you feel so great. Now, the very same person, he goes somewhere, out of his car, he left the car, parked the car in the parking lot, he went inside. There was a big queue there. He's standing in the queue. And someone comes and gets in front of him. And now he feels so humiliated. I wish he knows what type of car I drive so he won't get in front of me. He wants this person to know what type of car I drive. But that person doesn't care, doesn't know, and doesn't even want to know at this time. You go somewhere and you are being treated in a way where you feel humiliated. You want to know what type of neighborhood you live in. You wish you can tell that person somehow, you know, my house worth a million. You want to let him know somehow, so that because you feel that you're being humiliated at this point, and your honor and respect is through that house that you have, so you want that person to know that you have that type of house. And when you are out of that house, out of that neighborhood, out of that car, the person feels that really everyone is looking down at me. People don't know my position at this time. A person may be very wealthy and his, the type of job that he does is something very gives him, that gives him a lot of honor. People honor him at his office, at his job, at his workplace. And whenever someone knows about it, they really pay him a lot of respect because of it. He goes somewhere. And children are playing. He says to one of those children, you know, don't do this. And he says, yeah, who are you to tell me this? Mind your own business. And he feels like he wants to tell him, you know, I'm that doctor, I'm that architect, I'm that person. It's only because he's out of his office now, he's not having that respect and he feels himself that I'm really being humiliated. And the way I can get my respect back is by letting this person know that, you know, this is what I am. I'm of this field. This is what I do in my life. How many times 
Don't try to hide it. Just say to yourself, I don't want to know. How many times when we are sitting in a gathering, we would like people to know what type of work I do. And when you are leaving, you want that person to know what type of car you have driven. Because when you came in, you are expecting the person to be looking from the window or standing at the door to see that car. But, and this is why especially you brought that car today, but he did not come out to see it. So throughout the time, there is something telling you that, you know, you should do something where he should come out of the house and see that, okay, you came in this car. Now, all of these things that we have, whether it's knowledge that I'm proud of, or my wealth, or my car, my house. Number one, even in this dunya, in this world, we have them for a very short period. And every some time we are out of these things, out of these positions. With my knowledge, I end up being at a place where people have no regard for knowledge. They don't care about knowledge. They feel, I have wasted my life by spending so much years learning. Oh, you know, you should have come into this field of bodybuilding. Why were you doing you were studying in this school for so many years? What did you get out of it? Look at my muscles. I can't convince that person, that's it. So to that person, I'm nothing. And I thought I was everything because of my knowledge. So even within our life, although we have those things, but there is always a time when we are out of them, or we are at a place where people don't regard those things, have no regard for them, have no respect for it. But at the end, even if we have it all the time, at the end, a time would come when this person is going to leave this dunya. And when we are placed in our graves, believe me, if this is our position in this dunya, that we like people to know that what we are, our degrees, our education, our wealth, our cars, our homes, our situation in the community, our positions, and we are just proud of this and this is what we depend on, <coughs> in our graves, we will be so humiliated. Because we would like the angels to know that this is who I am and they don't care. And they don't want to know. And if we tell them, it may turn the other way. Oh, okay, so you just wasted your life in that thing there. Come here, let us show you what to do. So the point is, when the kibber comes, the greatness of a person comes into his mind that I'm something because of any of these things, then at that time the person will be totally helpless and will feel humiliated himself. Just like when we are depending on certain, certain things and then when you don't have it, you feel that really you are being humiliated. You drive a rental car, that was, they gave you an old rental car. <laughs> You go to somewhere with that car, you want the person to know, you know, this is not my car, this is a rental car. My car is a different one. And if this is what we depend on, in our graves, none of these things will be there. And a person will feel that now I have nothing really to depend on. But if we depend on our Iman in this life, on our a'mal salihah good deeds, they will be with us over there. They will not leave us, even there. Anyway, I don't want to change the topic and go into the details of the iman and a'mal. The point is greatness. What makes us great? What makes us better? When a person feels I'm great, when a person starts having these type of feelings, right away we should look at our own reality, our beginning who we are, what are we, what are we made out of. When a person forgets himself, we don't realize our own beginning, we don't realize our own end, we don't realize our own souls within this dunya, that every day we have to deal with our own najasa. You see dirt out there, you close your eyes, you hold your nose, but the same thing, we go to the toilet, we sit in the bathroom, at that time we need to really ask ourselves, who are we? With all the greatness that I'm trying to prove to people, this is my reality. 
So greatness belongs to Allah only. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute is Al Mutakabir. The one, again, I would say the one who claims the greatness for himself. And of course, when he claims this, he's very true in that claim. And therefore, it suits him. And if we would claim it, that will be a lie. That will be just mocking people or trying to show things that we don't have. Therefore, the only thing that suits human beings is humbleness. And again, I have to explain humbleness in brief also, that humbleness does not mean that you try to do things where others will have the feeling that you are being humble. This is also arrogance. This is part of the arrogance. You do something where you want people to feel that you are very humble. I would do something, so people will say, you know, mashallah, he's imam and he's learned, and still he did this, you know, with that, so he's humble. And I did it with, it with that intention. Allah knows. If anyone else won't find out, this arrogance will come out on the day of judgment. It won't be hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can cheat people, but not Allah. So the real humbleness is when a person realizes I'm nothing. And in reality, this is what it is. If we look at ourselves, we are nothing. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this quality of human being when they are humble and when they put themselves down for, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say for example, you enter the room and there is a place to sit on a couch. You didn't sit on the couch, you went and sat on the floor. To prove yourself humble. And other people came and sat up there. So now there is a feeling in your heart that, you know, let, I'm really, I should be humble. And I should let the other people sit up. Alhamdulillah, I did something very great today. I did very great that I practiced the humbleness in my life that I allowed the other person to sit up. What does this mean? It simply means something in my heart is telling me that really I deserve to sit up there. But I humbled myself and sat down. This is not humbleness. Humbleness is really, this is Allah's blessing that I'm even allowed to sit down here. If people would know my deeds, if people would know who I am, what I have done in the past, they won't even allow me to be with them. And even if they take my name in their gathering, they will be cursing at me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rahmah that I'm sitting with these people here. So really, this is the quality that we need to create in our souls. Our relationship, our connection with Al-Mutakabbir subhanahu wa ta'ala will be that we always realize that all greatness belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are nothing. No matter what people would say about me, all the people can say you are great. This is only a rahmah of Allah. But I know myself. And I know my reality. So I should not really try to prove myself anything more than what I am. And in this regard, of course, I have to admit that mostly this arrogance, this we call it takabbur, arrogance, is more amongst the people who have the knowledge of being than anyone else. Because through this knowledge you gain respect. As soon as the person starts getting little respect, he himself starts feeling that I'm getting somewhere. I'm, getting, I'm doing better. And I'm better than these people. I did two extra rak'ahs, they didn't do it. I'm better than these people. SubhanAllah. Who knows that the two rak'ah of this person may be better than my eight rak'ahs. The reward of his two rak'ahs may be greater than the reward of my ten rak'ahs. Wallahu alam. Never look down at others because of what you have. Never knows what is accepted, what is rejected. Final results depend on what is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who may 
have left his family in a very terrible situation and he just couldn't make it, couldn't spend any more time. He ran to the masjid, performed Salat al-Fajr with the Jama'ah, and then he went back home. He couldn't stay, stay with us. He couldn't sit to talk, to listen to our talks, or to give a talk, or to spend or some extra time to recite Quran in the masjid. We did all of that. But the situation that he came and he left behind him, and that was going through his mind, for coming in that situation to perform two rakah salah, maybe greater than all the other things that we are doing here. Who knows? We have no knowledge about these things. So anything we do, yes, do it. Do as much as you can. Never let that feeling comes to you that because of doing this, we are greater than others. It's Alhamdulillah Allah allowed us to do it, but that does not make us greater than others. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was taken for Isra and Mi'raj, one of the greatest miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm not saying is the greatest miracle, it's one of the greatest miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Isra and Mi'raj. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about it in Quran al-Kareem, what does he say? Subhan al-ladhi asra bi'abdihi. Glory to Allah who took who? Does not say who took his messenger. Did not say bi nabiyyihi. Did not say bi rasulihi. Did not even mention the name bi Muhammad. He said bi abdihi. Glory to Allah who took his servant. When Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really proved himself to be the true humble servant of Allah, Allah gave him that high position there. So going on a higher position will be by realizing our real position then you will get that position. And if you try to go high, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put the person down. Yes, many times in this dunya it may not be seen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will call all of those people that were arrogant and they tried to prove themselves in this life. Allah will call them and will put them into the form of small ants on the day of judgment and all the other people will be walking on them. This is the type of humiliation these people will have to go through. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, a type of neck will come out of the Jahannam and will say that Allah asked me to take every arrogant person and a tyrant person into Jahannam and will start picking up all of those people and three people. It will say that I am the Kulli Jabba, every tyrant ruler and Mutakabbir, every person that was arrogant and tried to prove himself something in this dunya. And Wabil Musawwireen, and every person who used to take pictures. These are the three types of people that I will take, and I'm supposed to take, pick up all of those people and throw them into Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that arrogance. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, a person will have an autumn of arrogance in his heart, will not be allowed in Jannah on the Day of Judgment. Until, of course, it's cleaned. In other hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-kibriya'u rida'i wal-azamatu izai. Greatness is my sheet. Kibriya and azama, they all both have the same meaning, similar meaning. Greatness. Greatness is my sheet. Whoever will try to take my sheet from me, I will throw him into Jannah. With this I must remind. Many times when we work towards humbleness, there will be two things that really will disturb us. Number one, if a person is sincere, then he will be disturbed that I'm trying to be, but there is some feeling inside my heart that tells me you are something. You know, people are looking at you in this way. If it's just a feeling, don't pay attention to it. Don't let it disturb you. You know who you are. We know what we are. And keep on dealing with people accordingly. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in spite of being so great, such a great prophet of Allah, such a great person. When he is invited somewhere, he just goes there and eats even to the house of the poorest person. He was invited by a sahabi. That day, look at the humbleness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That day, that sahabi had some extra work to do. He used to sew clothing for others. He was a tailor. 
So this day he had some extra work to do. And of course he had invited Prophet Wasallam. So when Rasulullah Wasallam came, he put the food and he said, Ya Rasulullah, you start eating. And he's sitting next to him and he's doing his work, sewing his clothes. And Rasulullah Wasallam eats as much as he wants and he said, Jazakallah khair, assalamu alaykum. Subhanallah, look at me, Allah. We feel that, look, he's not paying any attention to me, he's doing his own work. Why did he invite me if he didn't have no time for me? Look at the humbleness. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa goes to a sahabi's home. He knocks at the door three times. Didn't hear the reply, he goes back. How many times we find in the hadith, a woman sends a message, Ya Rasulullah, I need to talk to you. If you please come to my home. She doesn't come there because of the purpose of the hijab and there are other men in the masjid and she may not get the chance to talk. Ya Rasulullah, I need to talk to you. Whenever you have a chance, please stop by my house. I need to talk to you about it. SubhanAllah, and he goes. He doesn't say, no, no, I'm a prophet of Allah. You, know? you shouldn't call me like this. The hadith says, any person, sometime young girls, they would come, Ya Rasulullah, I need to ask you something. <laughs> okay, what do you need to ask? Ya Rasulullah, not here, in private. And she would hold his hand and take him away at the far corner of the street. And Sahaba are waiting in the masjid. And he goes with her and he listens to her and he pays full attention to her and answers all of her questions. When she is done, he would come back. That is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa For us, a person gets to a little position, I don't want to eat with you. And then I want to keep my position higher. And I want to stay always, keep my distance from you people. Subhanallah. If we are following the steps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then we need to see these things in our lives. It's not to judge others. Don't judge others. We need to look at ourselves. These things, our deen, our alm, or whatever else we have, should make, bring more humbleness to us. Should make us closer to people, not distant from people. And unfortunately, another thing that we see, with a little position the person has, just feels that everyone should pay me higher respect now. This is a sign that scholars always mention, a sign of arrogance. That whenever you feel that this person should have treated me in much higher way, much better way than it is. Yes, if a person humiliates another person, it's different. But in a normal position, where he feel, the way he treats his own friends, the way he treats his people, he was treating us that way, alhamdulillah, mashallah, very nice. So expectations that, okay, I should be treated this way, and when I go over there, they should do this for me, and they should plan this for me, and they should invite so many people for me. These are all signs of arrogance. We should always try to look at these things and treat this disease, one of the major disease, kibr, greatness, it only suits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا الحمد